What a time it is to be a fan of a specific video game franchise. Yes, you read the title of the video correctly. With yesterday's announcement of Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, it means that Square Enix has announced 12, yes that's 12, Final Fantasy games in the past 12 months. That's a new game announced every month. Just wrap your head around that for a second. But before we get on to what those 12 games are, let's just take a step back. Can you think of another publisher who could even fathom announcing 12 games from just one of their franchises in a single year? And that's not forgetting all the other games they've announced in the past year from other studios like Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Deus Ex Go, Rise of the Tomb Raider, 20 Year Celebration, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. If we extended the timeline a little, we could have also included World of Final Fantasy and the Final Fantasy VII Remake, both of which were announced at E3 2015, and the western localization of Final Fantasy Explorers, but 14 games in 15 months just didn't quite sound as punchy. We could have also included Kingsglaive Final Fantasy XV and some very much related games such as Bravely Second End Layer, which was of course announced for a western release, and Samurai Rising, but we wanted to be fair. So without much further ado, I'm Daryl from Final Fantasy Union and this is 12 Final Fantasy games that were announced in the past 12 months. Final Fantasy Type-0 Online the announcement of Final Fantasy Type 0 Online was a rather confusing one as it rose from the ashes of Final Fantasy Agato Plus like a phoenix. You see, Final Fantasy Agato Plus was actually announced for PlayStation Vita the year before and was due to release on the 15th of January 2015. When the date came, it just didn't materialise, much like the announced western port of Final Fantasy Agato. In the build up to Tokyo Game Show over half a year later, Square Enix announced that they would be starting afresh with the game and would be releasing a reborn version of Final Fantasy Agato. During the show, they announced that Agato Plus had been cancelled and the arrival of Type-0 Online came two days later. It's actually being developed by Perfect World and has been going through lots of testing in the Chinese market this year. We heard about it a couple of months ago and it's actually been scheduled for a western release too, but we'll hold our breath on that one while we wait for the originally promised Final Fantasy Agato to actually materialise. Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2 and 3 and 4? Let's be honest, when the Final Fantasy VII Remake was announced at E3 2015, the internet pretty much lost it. There had been so much hype around a game that may or may not happen that even though it was leaked the day before, fans were still beside themselves with excitement when the announcement did, in fact, materialise during the Sony press conference. Sure, it didn't quite reach the Shenmue levels of meltdown and happiness, but it was still pretty damn awesome when people figured out just what those swirly green lines were. We have since learned through an interview with Kataze and Nomura that the game won't be a self-contained experience. No, instead it will be told through multiple parts. No, it's not episodic! Each of those parts will be treated as a separate game with 40 to 50 hours of main story gameplay and then side quests thrown on top. Think of it like the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, except with them looking to retain the quality of the original game. I've counted this as two games in this list because it's safe to assume there will be a part 2 and part 3 thanks to Kataze's 13 comparison. But who knows, there may even be a fourth part. It just depends on how much they want to milk the heck. I mean, expand the original scenario with creative storytelling. Final Fantasy IX on mobile and PC. Square Enix kicked 2016 off with a bang when they announced Final Fantasy IX for PC and mobile on the 3rd of January. This was quite a big deal as it wasn't just going to be a simple port of the original PlayStation title. Final Fantasy IX was getting remastered. It also meant that a rather strange trilogy would be completed as Final Fantasy VII and VIII received PC versions in tandem with their original game releases, but when it came to Final Fantasy IX, Square Enix just decided against it. The closest we got at the time was a really awesome April Fool's joke that was conducted by Final Fantasy Online. Now it's kinda harsh, but as seems to quite often be the case when games involve Square Enix Japan and the PC, there did end up being complications. The mobile version released on iPhone and Android only a month after it was announced, but there was absolute silence on when the PC version would arrive. That was until rumours started swirling around on the 14th of April that Final Fantasy IX would actually be available on Steam very soon. Those rumours turned out to be true, and we were finally able to view those glorious upscaled FMV sequences on PC. The Atrium Final Fantasy All-Star Carnival with the City of Final Fantasy Arcade out in the world and doing pretty well, Square Enix decided that they wanted a bigger piece of the arcade action by announcing Theatrum Final Fantasy All-Star Carnival just a few months later. Featuring an all-new control scheme that makes use of both hands and the potential for co-op, All-Star Carnival should be a significant amendment to the Theatrum franchise, at least when it comes to gameplay. 
However, unlike its bigger arcade brother, there is almost zero hype concerning a Western release of this game on consoles, handheld or otherwise, but it's hardly surprising when you consider there's actually less content packed into this experience than there was with Curtain Core. We just have to keep reminding ourselves that this is all about the unique gameplay and the experience of playing an arcade, which many people are sure to do, if only for the novelty. Justice Monsters 5 Oh, Justice Monsters 5, you aren't even out yet and you've already probably been through more public turmoil in five months than most games do in their entire development cycles. Announced as a companion game for Final Fantasy XV during Uncovered Final Fantasy XV, Justice Monsters 5 was slated to arrive at some point during 2016 on mobile devices. Fair enough, but only two months later Square Enix revealed that they had encountered technical difficulties during development, it meant that they wouldn't be able to release the game as early as they'd hoped, but would be sharing the release date during E3 2016. It was therefore a bit perplexing that by the time E3 2016 had finished, we'd heard absolutely nothing about Justice Monsters 5. The developers then took to Twitter a few weeks later to announce that the game was due to release at the end of August, but wouldn't give a specific release date at that time. It's now scheduled to arrive on the 30th of August, which means they have actually hit their original release window. Yay! Final Fantasy Brave Exvius Okay, this one's a slight grey area. The game was announced quite some time ago for the Japanese market in 2014 and was released on the 22nd of October in 2015, but technically it was announced for Western release in the past 12 months. In reality, it was quite a quick and efficient release cycle. Following its announcement, the game was showcased at E3 2016 and released with no complications six weeks later on the 30th of June 2016 for both iOS and Android. If you're interested in checking it out, I recommend that you read our review before you do so. Mobius Final Fantasy Similarly to Brave Exvius, Mobius Final Fantasy has actually been out in the Japanese market for over a year, but the announcement of the Western release was rather strange to say the least. Instead of coming through traditional channels, it was subtly dropped into an update that appeared in the Final Fantasy Portal app. Yoshinori Kataze, the game's producer, was speaking as part of the first year celebrations for Mobius in Japan. He mentioned that localization was coming along well and the game would be available in the not too distant future. An official announcement with a pre-order campaign followed soon after, but due to the close proximity of the announcement against that of Brave Exvius, it didn't get anywhere near the same treatment. Not only did Mobius Final Fantasy skip E3 2016, while Brave Exvius was available to play on the show floor, the pre-registration campaign seemed like an afterthought. Upon smashing the original tiers, the website was updated with a short message stating that the team was surprised by the level of interest and they'd actually have to look into adding more bonuses in the near future as a thank you to fans. The game has since released on the 3rd of August 2016 to a rather glorious fanfare. Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age Perhaps they're just sick of leaks at this point, but Square Enix decided to jump the gun on almost everything at E3 2016. Not only did we get a release date for World of Final Fantasy before the show even started, they made an awful lot of English people spit out their morning tea when they announced Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. And no, we're not counting Arnie Roth's unfortunate faux pas as the announcement of this game. As many had hoped, Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age isn't just a straight remaster of the original game. Square Enix is using this opportunity to allow non-Japanese gamers to experience Final Fantasy XII The International Zodiac Job System for the first time, and we couldn't be more excited. Well, actually as a vocal critic of Final Fantasy XII, I probably could be more excited, but I'm willing to bury the hatchet and give it a fresh pair of eyes when it releases next year. A King's Tale Final Fantasy XV Without wanting to sound too harsh, the handling of A King's Tale Final Fantasy XV has been a bit of a mess. Not only did Square Enix choose to skip announcing it with everything else at Uncovered Final Fantasy XV, when it was announced, it was revealed that it would be a pre-order bonus that was only limited to specific retailers. This, as you'd imagine, led to quite a lot of frustration and confusion. Anyone who wanted to play this game and had pre-ordered Final Fantasy XV straight after Uncovered was left to go through the annoyance of switching over their pre-order to the new retailers. This fate was even dealt to those who had brought through the official Square Enix store. Those who had pumped up for the Ultimate Collector's Edition were even told that it wouldn't be included in their version of the game. What's the big deal, you might ask? Well, as far as we know, you can only receive a King's Tale by pre-ordering Final Fantasy XV through select retailers. There is literally no other way. But hey, if you've put down $270 for the Ultimate Collector's Edition already, what's another $60 on top, right? Aside from that, the game does have some promise. It uses a really cool art style and it follows the escapades of King Regis and his former band of brothers, Clarus, Sid, and Wescombe in a non-canon, dream-based narrative set 30 years before the events of Final Fantasy XV. We'll just have to wait and see whether we end up lamenting just how convoluted it's been to actually be able to play this game when it releases alongside Final Fantasy XV in November. Final Fantasy XIV Realm Reborn Expansion 2 
Even though the official name of Final Fantasy XIV's second expansion hasn't been given, Yoshi P revealed in an interview with Game Watch that development is very much underway and that we can expect further details during the October Final Fantasy XIV FanFest in Las Vegas. Now, I appreciate that A, this isn't a standalone game, and B, it hasn't been named yet, so therefore isn't official, but to that I say baloney! With the sheer amount of content they threw in Heaven's Ward, we can only assume that the next expansion will be more of the same, so it very much warrants a place on this list, and with Yoshi P quite openly talking about its existence, I'm happy to take that as an official announcement. Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia with everything else announced in the past 12 months, and with games such as World of Final Fantasy on the horizon, the appearance of Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia yesterday was quite a surprise to say the least. I don't think anyone was expecting it, but really, at this point we should know better. Not only does Opera Omnia act as a spin-off to the Dissidia franchise, which is a spin-off itself, it's another game that will feature an assortment of Final Fantasy characters in a turn-based RPG format, albeit integrating Dissidia features such as Brave. Oversaturation is what initially came to mind, but at the same time, it does look rather adorable. Yes, it still has the annoyance of Cloud Strife being front and centre in all the promotional artwork, but they've also showcased characters such as Rem, Yuffie, Hope, Sifa, Steiner, Sars, and even Ida. That in itself makes the game appealing to me, but in truth, we know very little about this game at the moment. It has been pinned down for a 2016 release in Japan, but given Square Enix's recent track record with Final Fantasy Mobile games, it's unlikely that we'll see it for about a year anyway. We can get more excited about it when a western release date comes, if, of course, another 10 games haven't been announced that look even better in the meantime. So that's 12 Final Fantasy games that have been announced in the past 12 months. Which are the ones that you're most excited for, and which are the ones that you enjoyed playing the most this year? If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it and subscribe. We're going to be putting more of this kind of content up in the future, so we hope you really enjoy it, and be sure to listen to the podcast and the WAG Digest as they come out. Thanks a lot, everyone.